I came here to the United States when I was 20 years old. Actually, it was my birthday when I came here. Uh, my mom and uh, my brothers were home. They went to pick me up by um, it was a McDonald's, I believe. And for the first time in life, uh, I saw my mom. I hugged my mom, kissed my mom, and finally I met my brothers. I felt like it was like a reunion. We live in a foodie culture, and I wish that we could see beyond the food sometimes to the hands that make the food. To get to the story of the guy who's bussing the tables or who's doing the food prep. the politics of, of migration, the, the labor economy, all that drama plays out in the restaurants that we go to, that get Zagat raided and that are all the rage one day. And, and when we walk into those places, we're actually on such intimate terms with these migration stories. We're eating food that's been touched by hands that in turn have been molded by war and uh, political upheaval and Famine. Well, I mean, when I hired George, uh, he was a dishwasher. June 17th of 2016, it'll be 11 years that we've been open, and Jorge's been here that whole time. It was like a body of emotions, but at the same time, I left my dad back in Guatemala. So I didn't know if cry, uh, laugh, feel happy, feel sad, many things. But... It was a new life. It was something different. He does everything. He's always one of the first ones here. He receives all of our produce. He oversees the guys when they come in in the morning. The prep list that we prepare on a nightly basis probably has over 100 different things listed. That's a big job. <laughs> it's a big job. When he's not here, it takes two people to do it. To shuck an oyster, it requires you to be a little gentle on the little guy, regardless of how big or small it is. Because if you go in there like Rambo, you're gonna completely tear it up. And you're gonna, it's gonna look, the presentation will be awful. Rigo's a great kid. And the fact that he's George's brother, the fact that they came from the same womb just blows me away because they couldn't be more polar opposites. You know, I mean, I think largely it has to do with the fact that Rigo was brought up here and George was brought up back home. The first time I, I stepped into the kitchen, I didn't know what I was really getting into. I thought that it was just gonna be simple little things, simple recipes, but then you're issued an a apron, a, a cook hat, and a chef coat, and then they go, all right, here's this recipe, now do it. So George had to go ahead and hold my hand and, tell, and guide me through, this is how you slice a carrot. This is how you clean a leek. And it takes time, and even to this day, I'm still learning a lot more things. Behind every kitchen in Los Angeles, I don't care if it's a sushi restaurant, a Mexican restaurant, a fine dining establishment, there's a Mexican or a Central American in the kitchen. And it's not just the dishwasher. And a lot of people say, well, you know, it's because of cheap labor. Well, they're willing to do it. It's, and really, that's not what it is. It's actually people that are very skilled at doing this. You need a professional.
I think it's a matter of a level of comfort with whole foods. If you grow up in a household where your folks are out buying fresh food every day, bringing whole chickens home, bringing whole vegetables home, um, and then preparing fresh meals every day, I think it just rubs off. My grandma was the, she's the one who always will make like really good food and uh, that's my inspiration. Chef Michael is like, make the best, like, bum ass sauce you ever made, so. Yes. Chiro Morning, what's your Morning? It's a Mayan word. It means uh, running nose. I started like charring all these tomatoes, onion, cilantro, meat. My grandma, she never left no recipe, so I tried to like find that taste and try to remember her. Chef Michael tried it, and she's like, this is really awesome. This is good. It's this great salsa that the more you taste it, the more you love it. And eventually, I asked George to make a more refined version to use on our menu, because you're so delicious, and there's so many things you can do with it. So we're, we're going to cook them for 15 seconds. I was discussing with George, like, if you were going to serve the chermol at home, and by at home, I mean Guatemala, with a protein, what would you serve it with? And he said, um, if it was going to be fish or shellfish, it would definitely be shrimp. So that's why we went with shrimp. To give it more of a local flavor, we're using spot prawns from Santa Barbara. And I think we're super fortunate to be here in Southern California, be able to access them throughout the season. So it was, it was basically, it was the first course that guests would get here. It was the backbone of the dish. And so George was very proud when, when it made it to the menu. Yeah, it was, it was great. The difference between me and George, I was living in the States at the time, and my brother was living in Guatemala. They have a very big gang problem over there, so he'll tell me, oh, this, I got beat up, or they try to beat me up, or they try to rob me. You would have, like, gang members right outside of the school, and the inside of the school want you to jump in, or want to beat you up outside. So it was either being with them or being against them. I, it's just... It's sad, you know, hearing about my brother struggling, and I'm here living comfortable, and while he's over there trying to just survive. Now he's a father to two young boys, and, you know, he's had his struggles and he's had his issues over the years. I can't imagine this place without him. He's as valuable to his restaurant as any of the other chefs, and he has a sense of ownership and pride about what he does. He just pushes every day pushes himself, pushes the people around him so that he meets like his own very high standard for what he does. And, and that's, I don't know, you, can't, you really can't ask for more than that. It's a story of long odds. It's a story of violence. It's a story of getting kicked out of a place that you know and love. They wound up in Los Angeles. They wound up in a town that's booming for some and it's hard grinding work for a lot of others. So let's say I took all the bad stuff from one of my life, bring it here, and just switch them, just like flip them, make something positive with it. And that's how I believe I have to get fired from Provo Restaurant. Just like putting your heart and putting everything you have and like do your job. And I'm still working on it. Remember, if you don't serve it to your mama, don't serve it here. Table three. 